Today, we will animate the limit derivative of x squared using an extension that I'm building for Manum called Reactive Manum. Reactive Manum allows us to construct two math expressions from the same variables. This creates a correspondence that lets us animate one expression into the next automatically. On the screen, you can see a preview of what the programming style is like, where it handles with ease even complex animations like binomial expansion. You can find the full code for the animation at the project's GitHub page. I'm also creating a documentation site. I'll leave links to these in the description below. And before we start, if you use Manum Community Edition, then you can install this extension by the command pip install reactive manum. Let's start with a portion of the animation pertaining to x plus h squared. The latex for f of x is generated by the construction function f comma x. To create the latex for f of x plus h, we place strings for x plus and h inside an array. The latex for x squared is generated using the term component. If we specify paren equals true as the third parameter, then the x will be wrapped in parentheses. This construction generates latex for x plus h squared. Again, we use an array to pass in strings for x plus h. In this case, paren equals true must be specified to ensure the entire x plus h appears squared, and not just the h. Here, we declare math strings for x plus and h, which are then passed into a function component. To compress this notation, we can obtain these math strings by unpacking a math text. Using these references, we can set the color of x to green, and we can set the color of h to blue. And this is the important part. We can pass in these references for x plus and h into our term component that generates x plus h squared. The variables in both expressions are now linked by metadata, so Reactive Manum can now generate an automatic animation between these expressions. So this is the animation returned by transform and stages dot replacement transform. Now, if you pay attention to the parentheses, you'll notice they don't transform over. And this is because while we pass in the x plus and h into both expressions, there still is no correspondence between the parentheses. The function component comes with parentheses, which can be accessed via func.paren. We can pass these directly into the terms constructor. And now the parentheses will transform over. Let's put what we've gone over so far into Visual Studio Code. In this file, I import manum and reactive manum, create a scene, and in the scene we obtain math strings for x plus and h. We construct the function component and add it to the scene. Then we construct x plus h squared and perform the replacement transform. Let's now animate the binomial expansion for x plus h squared. Notice how the x, h, and exponent variables are broadcast to multiple locations in the target state. This will be our construction for the binomial expansion. Take a moment to observe where the sites are for x squared, 2xh, and h squared respectively. To create the correspondence required for automatic animation, we will now reuse variables from the previous term component. First, we pass in the x into the x squared and 2xh sites. Then, we pass in the h into the 2xh and h squared sites. Reactive Manum will interpret this as an instruction to broadcast these variables. We pass in the parentheses from the previous term component using term.paren. And there is one last item left, there is still no correspondence between the exponents. Now, we could construct a math string for the number 2 and pass it into both term components. However, in this case, I think it's easier to obtain the exponent in x plus h squared by using the term's exponent attribute. We can pass in term.exponent into the x squared and h squared sites to broadcast the exponent. Here is the updated code. At line 23, the term that contains the binomial expansion is named expert. We then perform a replacement transform between the previous term component and expert.
Now let's include f of x and x squared into the animation, and then we will construct the limit derivative expression. We will let func1 be f of x and func2 be f of x plus h. A math text containing func2 minus func1 is then f of x plus h minus f of x. The approach for the animation will be different this time. We will edit the math text directly, and then we will use the progress transform to animate these edits. First, we construct term1 and term2 representing x squared and x plus h squared. I'm intentionally leaving the exact implementation blank for now, so we can focus on the pattern for the progress transform. Here, we have tex0 equals term2. Now, tex0 is a reference that points to func2, so here we are replacing func2 with term2. And here we have tex2 equals term1, and this replaces func1 with term1. Finally, we animate the changes made to tex using transform and stages progress tex. So, the only piece missing is how do we construct the squared terms from the components of the function terms. Now, we won't be able to use the x and x plus h variables to construct term1 and term2. And the reason for that is that we want to link the x in func1 with the x in term1. However, at the moment of term1's construction, the reference for x points to the x in func2. So we'd be linking the x in f of x plus h with the x in x squared. So instead, we'll pass in func1.input, which will pass in function 1's x variable. And for term 2, we can pass in func2.input, which will pass in the x plus and h into term 2. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why we went to the trouble of creating explicit math strings for x plus and h when we ended up just passing in func2.input anyway. The reason for this is that we can still construct the binomial expansion using the x and h references, since the x and h references were transferred to term2 when we constructed term2 with func2.input. Before we move on, you can pause the video if you want to see the full code for this section. We are now ready to construct the full limit derivative expression. We need to place our construction of f of x plus h minus f of x inside the numerator of a fraction component. So, this is how we can construct a fraction in reactive manum. I'm going to delete the current math text, as we can construct the math text directly into the fraction using array brackets. This gives us the fraction component. Now, we want to add a prefix before the fraction so that it reads the limit as h approaches zero. We can do this by placing the fraction into a math text that includes this prefix. This completes the limit derivative expression. You can pause the video if you want to look at the code. We will now add the previous animation in a way that is compatible with a full limit derivative expression. There is no change to the construction of the term components. We construct x squared and x plus h squared as we did before. But the math text we are trying to edit is now inside the numerator of a fraction. So instead of using text, we will now use frac.numerator to replace the function components with term components. And here is the updated code. And before we move on, you might notice that the addition of the exponents seems to push the entire expression downwards. We can fix this by wrapping the edits we made in h.saveY and h.restoreY. This will reposition the root expression so that the height of the h is held constant. Now let's incorporate the binomial expansion. If you look at the parentheses around the x squared, you'll notice they disappear during this step. With term 1.paren equals none, we make the parentheses on the x squared disappear. Here, we overwrite x plus h squared with its binomial expansion, xpr. And xpr is the same as before, except now we use term 2 instead of just term. And here is the updated code. If you look at line 38, instead of using xpr to store the binomial expansion, I'm reusing the reference for term 2. You can see on line 45 that I've added transform and stages.progress to animate these edits.
let's remove the parentheses wrapping the binomial expansion, and then we will subtract away the x squared terms. At this point in the program, the fraction's numerator is a math text that is represented by the following array. The first element is the term component that contains the binomial expansion. Then there are the minus and x squared elements. I'm going to recreate the numerator, where we will place the elements of the binomial expansion directly into its array. The minus and x squared terms will continue on as before. The new array for the numerator drops the term component, and with it, the parentheses are dropped as well. Then, we can reconstruct the numerator again, passing in the 2xh and h squared elements, and this will drop out the x squared terms. We can use the terms attribute of the numerator to reinitialize its array. The unpacking operator will place the elements of the binomial expansion into the new array for the numerator. We then carry over the minus and x squared elements. The progress transform will then animate the removal of the parentheses. We then restrict the array to the slice containing 2xh plus h squared. The progress transform will then drop out the x squared terms. And if you need to, you can pause the video here. Here we have two animations in four lines of code. The next step is to cancel out h terms. We want to be left with 2x plus h, so we need to remove the h's from the numerator, and then we have to completely remove the denominator. In the numerator, the 2xh term constitutes an array where the h is at the second position. So fraction.numerator0 is the 2xh term. The h is at position 2, and then we disconnect the h from the 2xh using the pop command. Here, fraction.numerator2 locates the h squared term. Then we remove the exponent using exponent.pop. And so now we have 2x plus h in the numerator. We'll get rid of the denominator by removing the fraction component entirely. And just a reminder, the fraction is located inside the root math text at an index of 1. We'll reassign text 1 to the fraction's numerator, bypassing the fraction altogether. We can do this with text1 equals text1.numerator. Here is the updated code. It's three lines of code for the three edits, and one line for the animation. Now we evaluate the limit, and we'll be left with 2x. We'll reconstruct the array of the root math text to contain only the 2x term. And with this last line, we have finished the code for the animation. You can find the code for this tutorial in the examples directory of the project's GitHub page. There is also a documentation site, where you can click on a math component that you're interested in, and it will take you to a page that has examples for that component.